Hello. This e-lecture is introductory in character. It informs you about the definition and the use of syntactic functions and thus constitutes a basis for further discussions in more specific e-lectures. In this overview, we will first talk about the traditional subject predicate analysis and will then proceed with a more fine-tuned analysis of the central elements of clause structure. Our main goal is to define clausal constituents on the basis of their syntactic function, that is, on the basis of the role they play in the clauses and the sentences of which they are a part. Let's start with the most general traditional functional distinction and that of course was made between the subject and the predicate. The subject is often defined as a constituent specifying the topic of the sentence whereas the predicate is that which is asserted about the subject. The predicate itself can be subdivided into an operator and a predication where the operator is in present-day English at least normally an auxiliary verb. By reversing the sequence of subject and operator declarative sentences can be turned into interrogative sentences. Let's look at some examples. Here they are. The cat has never sat on the mat. So clearly the cat is the subject, has is the operator and never sat on the mat is the predication. Or take the next one. John will give Mary the book. Again the subject is easy to find. John and then we have will as the operator and give Mary the book is the predication. Well and finally here we have an interrogative sentence has is of course here an operator so here you see the sequence of subject and operator has been reversed well and then done his homework is of course the predication now this analysis is relatively superficial for this reason a more detailed functional analysis distinguishes the following functional elements of clause structure subject verb, object, adverbial and complement. This analysis is described in detail in the comprehensive grammar of the English language published by Sir Randolph Quirk and his colleagues Sidney Greenbaum, Jan Swartwick and Geoffrey Leach. Let us exemplify these elements subject, verb, object, adverbial and complement on the basis of a very simple sentence. Yesterday John made Mary happy. Here we have five elements and each of these elements realizes one syntactic function. Clearly John is the subject, made is the verb, Mary is an object, happy is a complement and last but not least yesterday is an adverbial. So here you see on the basis of a simple sentence the realization of the five functional elements of clause structure. Let us now look at these five functional elements of clause structure or in short syntactic functions in more detail. Let us start with the verb. Now here you have six sentences on, and on the basis of these sentences we will identify the central elements of clause structure. The verb, which we will underline in red, is the most central element of a clause. Let us underline the verbs first. In sentence number one it's clearly searches. The verb in number two is here. Made is the verb in number three. Number four has a more complex verb, has been raining. In number five it's also complex, has spent. And the verb in number six is will stay. 
Now, how can we identify the verb? It's relatively easy. In present-day English, it occurs usually in the middle rather than at the beginning or the end of a clause. Exception are, of course, imperative sentences. In major sentences, like these here, the verb is obligatory. We cannot drop the verb in any of these sentences unless we want the sentence to become ungrammatical. The verb can also normally not be moved into a different position in the clause. And then the verb determines what other functional elements of clause structure must occur. For example, if we take number one, the verb search determines that the subject must be an agent and that there must be an object. Well, and last but not least, the verb is marked morphologically, that is, the word classes that realize the syntactic function verb are auxiliaries and verbs themselves. Let us now identify the subjects in our sentences. You see, the, verb are now, the verbs are now marked red. So let's underline the subject with a blue color. In number one, it is clearly John. Number two, the girl. In number three, it's they. The subject in number four is simply it. Lorna realizes the subject in number five and John is the subject in sentence number six. How can we identify the subjects? Well, the subject, first of all, is normally a noun phrase. As in our cases, we always have noun phrases or it can be a nominal clause. The subject normally occurs before the verb in declarative clauses and after the operator in interrogatives. It is obligatory in finite clauses. In imperative clauses, it is normally implied. Well, and then if it is a pronoun, it requires the subject or subjective form as in they. Well, and if you passivize a sentence, an active sentence that ha also has an object, that is, it must have a transitive verb, then the subject becomes the biphrase in the corresponding passive. Let's do it with number one. John very carefully searches the room. The room is very carefully searched by John. And since by John becomes the biphrase of the corresponding passive, it must be the subject of the active clause. Having identified the subjects and the verbs, let us now look at the objects in our sentences. You see, subjects are marked blue and the verbs are marked with a red color. So let's select green for our objects. We have an object in number one, the room. We have an object in number three, him. And we have an object in number five, the day. Like the subject, the object is typically a noun phrase or a nominal clause. Let us look at some criteria that help us to identify the object. In standard simple declarative sentences, the object normally follows the subject and the verb. This is true for all three cases. The object of an active clause usually becomes the subject of the corresponding passive. So this is a nice discovery procedure for objects. So if you passivize sentence number one, the room is searched very carefully by John and the room becomes the subject of the corresponding passive. Or take number three, he was made the chairman. Or number five, the day has been spent by Lorna. So in each, cases, in each case, the object becomes the subject of the corresponding passive. Let's now look at the adverbials in our example sentences and let's underline the adverbials using a brown color. Well in number one we have very carefully an adverbial in number two is now and there's a second one at Oxford Last year is an adverbial in sentence number three. All day is an adverbial in number four. In the garden in number five. And in bed is an adverbial in number six. Adverbials are the most diverse of the functional 
clause elements. They can be realized by a variety of syntactic categories. For example, they can occur as simple adverbs, like in number two, now, or as adverb phrases, as in number one, very carefully. They can also be realized by means of prepositional phrases, as in number two, at Oxford, number five, in the garden, and number six, in bed. Or they can be noun phrases, as in number three and four, last year, all day. A further, further possibility is using adverbial clauses, but we don't have an example in our simple sentences. The most important criteria for identifying adverbials is that they are generally mobile. For example, we can move very carefully around. We could say, John searches the room very carefully, or very carefully, John searches the room. So let's put it back into the original position. On the other hand, adverbials can be dropped altogether. So the sentence is fully grammatical even without the adverbial. John searches the room. And you can perform the same test for all the other adverbials. Finally, we have two complements in our sentences. Let's mark them using a this color. So, where are the complements? One complement is clearly a student and the other one is they made him the chairman. Now these complements are different. Complements are normally in a copular relationship with another functional element. For example, in number two we have a so-called subject complement where we have a copular relationship between a student and the subject girl. So both share the same set of features, they're both singular. So this is how to identify a subject complement. Now in the case of number three we have an object complement. So here we have a copular relationship between the chairman and him. The complement is formally realized normally by a noun phrase or by an adjectival phrase. So in our cases we have noun phrases. To identify complements two ways are generally suggested. For subject complements as I already said. Subject complements normally share the grammatical properties that is number for example with the subject and object complements well, here is a nice test again. They cannot become the subjects of corresponding passives. So, he was made, the chairman by them is possible, but the chairman was made by them for him or something like it is impossible. So, as a result, him is an object and the chairman is clearly an object complement. Well, that's it. Here is the result of our analysis. And now you see all the elements represented in their appropriate colors, subject, verb, object, adverbial, and complement. Well, and if we make the functional elements visible by means of their names, well, then you see that in each case, the subject precedes the object. So in present-day English, we clearly have an SV structure in declarative sentences. And whenever there is an object, like in number one, for example, the object follows the verb. And sometimes we may have an adverbial in between, like in number one, where the adverbial very carefully occurs between the subject and the verb. That's it for now. It's simple, isn't it? So, this e-lecture was just an overview. In a series of follow-up e-lectures, we will look at the syntactic functions in detail and we will discuss the underlying discovery principles and procedures using a variety of exercise material. So, see you there.